So today I'm here at the Grand Annex, which is part of the Grand Vision Foundation organization. Three things that make this place so important to San Pedro is one, it's part of the renovation project for the Warner Grand Theater. Two, this is an amazing venue for where a lot of entertainment, music, arts, theater happens right in here, and a lot of community type activities as well. And then third, this is part of the music education program for the kids here in the Harbor area. Let's go in and find out more. My name is Liz Schindler Johnson. I'm the executive director of Grand Vision Foundation. Um, we're a nonprofit arts organization located here at 434 West 6th Street. Also, we, our offices, which are upstairs, cohabitate with the Grand Annex, which is where we are right now. This is a music venue that basically is open most weekends and a lot of weeknights of the year. I actually have a background in fine art and art history and some event planning and then also urban planning. So I, I sometimes say I majored in city and party planning. So when the Warner Grand and, um, seemed to really be in need and I had met some folks and found myself on the board of Grand Vision Foundation years ago, the quality of the building and the art, the building is art and so the art and the need for restoration and the potential and all the events we were even having back then when there was no heat. You know, it just really uh, attracted me and because, you know, passion for it, I feel like I started building Grand Vision into something that could really make a difference, really get the work done. And then I was lucky enough that my urban planning background helped me work with the city the city of Los Angeles and become a partner and then continue to build. So it all just kind of, it kind of merged somewhat nicely. Excellent. And that makes a lot of sense. You, you talk about your urban planning and your um, connection with the arts and economically, the Grand Annex and the Warner Grand are a big part of our economic development here in San Pedro, both for entertainment and arts, and then also helping support our local restaurants and just making it a good quality of life mm -hmm. for how we live, work, and play here in San Pedro, right? Absolutely, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, there are studies, people have to do studies on these things that the average theater goer will spend at least $40 in the community where they are uh, attending an event. And, you know, when I started here in San Pedro, we were reeling from some of the economic changes and larger forces than ours that were really draining the community of uh, economic strength. And I feel like slowly but surely we're really rebuilding and we really have rebuilt. So many of the things I, I envisioned have happened. Um, so a lot of our Grand Vision has occurred. Not all of it, and not just me, but Grand Vision Foundation as a whole, the board of directors and so many supporters. We do want to see even more, like an even bigger black box theater directly around this area, more parking, perhaps a parking structure, more facilities to adjunct to the Warner Grand as we develop. So tell me a little bit about how the Grand Vision Foundation came to be. It was founded in 1996 by people other than me who were very concerned because the theater was up for sale. And so these uh, various people formed Grand Vision Foundation, which was always meant to be the friends group to the Warner Grand Theater, which we still are to this day. And their vision was to start by saving the theater from one of those purposes or possibly worse. And they basically convinced the city of Los Angeles with help from the councilman at the time, Rudy Savornich, to actually buy the theater for the city, for the people of Los Angeles and the community, basically as a cornerstone of revitalization. So that happened in 96 at the same time that Grand Vision incorporated as a nonprofit organization. Tell me about how people can contribute to the Grand Vision Foundation, both monetarily and volunteer-wise, and how can we um, help with the restoration of the Warner Grant? 
Wow, those are wonderful questions. Well, obviously we always um, need volunteers for both the annex where people can be ticket takers and raffle sellers and bar workers and all sorts of things. So we really rely on our incredible group of volunteers and a lot of times they make good friendships with one another too. So we welcome that interest. And then of course we are a nonprofit arts organization. So if people go to grandvision.org, there's a big donate button and they can always donate. They can become a member, which entitles them to free drinks at some of our wine tastings and beer tastings at, before our concerts and other fun benefits and better seating and all sorts of things, including at the Warner Grand. And so we urge people to become members or sometimes just donate. And then of course they can adopt a seat at the theater, which means they get a plaque with their name on it that doesn't say what Lee had in mind, <laughs> but says something like adopted by, and then they, they have that seat and they can sit in it if they want, if it's not, you know, if they want to buy that seat, but that's not part of it. It's really just in knowing that they made a donation to help with the restoration of the main lobby. And they have a presence in the theater. Mm -hmm. And it's really meaningful. And it's, it's pretty cool because almost all the seats on the main orchestra level are already adopted. It's like over 900. It's pretty touching because over the years, some of the folks have passed. And we have that memory and that connection. And that legacy. It's amazing. Everything from rock, pop, jazz, blues. We had a Django Reinhardt style jazz guitarist and band here last Saturday that I wasn't here but I understand was amazing. We have taiko drumming on Mondays. We have lots of community events. We even can show movies. We have a movie screen. You know we just really try to use this as much as possible as often as possible. We call it the Grand Annex because it's like the annex of the Warner Grand. <laughs> and so that's one of the things that we will continue while the no matter what while the Warner Grand Theater is closed, the Grand Annex will be open. This space is a great space for, you had mentioned the concerts, that um, how do people find out about your concert? Well, really, honestly, I would just urge people to go on grandvision.org and sign up for our e-newsletter. Basically, if you buy a ticket, you'll get on our newsletter, or if you sign up, because Shows are being booked all the time, and we have a, a regular season mailer. This is what our season mailer looks like. It always looks so, like this. And so we do mail this to 20,000 people in our immediate area, mostly, um, and a few fans that live somewhere else. We still have a, an, a fan that used to live here who moved to Hawaii, and we still send them the, our, our uh, season mailer. But um, we try to put as much as we can of what's going on into our mailer and also into our flyer about what's going on at the Warner Grand. But, but also stuff comes up and if you know you want to be at the show where Lucas Nelson was actually in the audience and pops up on stage and starts jamming, you kind of have to be in the know. Be there. Yeah. yeah that's <laughs> awesome. And what's the second part? The second part is meet the music. And Meet the Music is a big part of Grand Vision. It is a music education program for elementary school students, primarily in the fourth and fifth grade, but we teach all the way from kindergarten to sixth right now. And we're in most of the schools, the Title I schools, which is the schools that have a preponderance of lower income students in San Pedro and Wilmington and also in Harbor City, the Lomita Harbor City area. So we teach about 3,500 students basic music education, which involves coming to the annex for concerts to have that experience, or our program's called Roots of Music Program, ROMP, and we also have Romp on the Road. So we also send our amazing program with our incredible musicians out to schools all the way up to the valley. We have a very robust program and it's very multicultural. The way we go about teaching fundamentals of music, basically it teaches about music from a non-Western perspective and music making. So we really try to be accessible to all. And then we also have a, some more fundamental classes where we, you can get 24 lessons of recorder all year long and percussion and even we have a little violin program percolating. So Meet the Music is a big part of Grand Vision and it's amazing. We have I think like 
22 schools, 158 classrooms, 3,500 kids, and by the time this video is shown, it'll probably be a different number. So Meet the Music has, um, you know, th three major components, you know, the, uh, the recorders and the percussion and violins, and that's out in the schools. Mm -hmm. And then here at the Annex, you have the ability of bringing in additional teachers and talent um, so that the kids can see more of how music applies to our culture. Absolutely. And, and get to see, you know, top performances right here in San Pedro. It's incredible. And the kids learn how to behave at a, a concert. They're here in this room. Their teachers are on high stools looking at them and they're all in rows on the floor and the teachers are watching. Their behavior is wonderful because they've been prepped and they've been taught a lesson before. Then they see a concert, which is part of a lesson where our performers have been also trained to give the lesson. And then they go back and they have a wrap up and they do that three times. And so they learn about melody and pitch, rhythm and steady beat and dynamics. And they actually learn it with real life musical experiences. And it's amazing. <laughs> it's so heartwarming to come here. And we do invite interested grown-ups to come and sit on our VIP deck and watch the concerts from time to time as well. The Warner Grand Theater. It was owned at the time by a one-hit wonder named Lee Michaels. He was living there, I think with his girlfriend. They have stories about them, you know, with popcorn, watching a movie together, but he, was, he had grand plans that didn't kind of pan out. And at the end of the day, he put it up for sale and it looked like it was gonna be purchased to become a swap meet or possibly a church. But that's kind of what happens when real estate loses all its value. Yes. And this was in the early 90s. So can we talk about some of those past performers or people that have performed at the Warner Grant? I, I know, I heard that the, um, the bathroom was used by Madonna. Oh yeah, there's a great Herb Ritz film shoot in the bathroom and also in the loading area, like some very good poses by the urinals. <laughs> which, in the men's room. <laughs> uh, which if, if I could ever find big enough, yeah, exactly. If I could ever find big enough uh, photos, I would definitely want to have a little, you know, a little display because right. people would love that. And recently there were some films like they just filmed Ant-Man 3. We've had Misty Copeland do a master class and just so many commercials. So many times you're just you're just watching a TV show and boom, it's the Warner Grant. Oh yeah, the Warner Grant is All the time. every Super Bowl. <laughs> I bet you there will be a Super Bowl commercial that'll for have sure, for an sure. image of the Warner It's such a great resource for the film industry and uh, it's also affordable for them. So we get a lot of filming and makes us feel like we're part of the LA entertainment industry. And the cool thing is, I think, is the fact that that could have gone another way, right? The Warner Grand, if you didn't step in to help maintain it and to revitalize it, it could have become something less than. And the fact that we're going to put so much money, time and effort into mm -hmm. revitalizing that beautiful space and to honor the fact that we are an arts district a cultural arts district here in Los Angeles. That really puts a pin in San Pedro and allows us to celebrate our history and our future. Absolutely. I mean, one thing people ask is, why do you have such a great theater here? Why is it so beautiful? Why is it so big? And one of my first things that I explain to people is that San Pedro used to be a huge center of labor. There used to be like 160,000 people working on the docks. And then also 6th Street was a major thoroughfare where the bus stopped on Pacific and then people got off to come down 6th, take the ferry before the Vincent Thomas Bridge was built, right. take the ferry to Terminal Island where the canneries were, or all the way to Long Beach. So we were a real hub right here. But not only that, there were at least 12 theaters in San Pedro before the Warner Grand was ever built. It was the last and the largest, but there were a couple of Fox theaters, there was a Strand, there was a Globe, and... Dancing uh, Waters. <laughs> that one now, <laughs> but that, that may have been an old theater, but quite a few of them have been torn down. And some of them were, you know, quite grungy when they, when they left the planet. I really played a role back when I started the Save Your Seat campaign in the mid-2000s, and that's when we 
raised a ton of money from this community, really from people adopting seats one at a time or sometimes a row and raising enough money first to redo the seats because we, we didn't want to get new ones. We wanted to make sure to restore what we had. We did everything we needed to do to, to make that happen and also widened the seats, got rid of like the 18 inchers, which our modern day butts don't fit into <laughs> as well, and did a big project with a new sound system and all the things we needed to do just get the place up and running because it was in really bad condition. And the city partnered, they put in heating and air conditioning, some critical things we could never have afforded. And so we've been partnering with the city of Los Angeles that does own the building for a very long time on making improvements, fixing broken stuff, some of it's not glamorous, like doing some electrical here and there, but some of it's pretty fantastic, like getting to sort of scenic painters that do a special kind of painting. To restore the you know, restoration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the projects we're working on now is still asking people if they'll adopt a seat, and you did. I did. And that can was I, awesome. Can I just point out the fact that I adopted two seats. One of the seats said, <laughs> I was going to say, Lee Williams sat here. <laughs> <laughs> dot 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 naked enjoy the show and you vetoed that i did veto I, I, still, that you know the, you know I, I wouldn't have the, me now in 2023 would have said fine but me in 2006 or 7 no i was God. very stingy and strict you could only say adopted by or in memorial so that you know well, or it's, first it's, kiss exactly <laughs> beautiful well it, it's a great way to um to maintain the theater and to raise money for the theater and also for people to have personal ownership and identify themselves with the theater. So thank you for doing oh, that. Oh, well, thank you. Cool. And I'm glad that the city lets us do it. It's very cool. And hopefully during this big renovation that you mentioned, that is going to start sometime probably this year um, when the city's Bureau of Engineering is ready and they vet their contractors and they finish all the plans, get all their permits. They will be doing a, a major renovation, which the city and Grand Vision have been both calling for for a long time. and. The councilman found the funds, Councilman Buscaino found the funds, and I'm sure our new councilman, um, Councilman McCosker, will see this through beautifully. Yes. So can you tell me about the major changes that will be put into effect in the theater? Okay, well, the major one that I'm so glad for is an elevator, a main elevator that's gonna go from the lower lobby to the main lobby, to the mezzanine lobby, and all the way up to the projection booth. And that's something we really need because there's so many special things that happen on the mezzanine lobby and we're, you know, grandfathered in because it's this historic building, but it's it's just not appropriate to have a space that, you it's know, exactly, it's yeah. just utterly impossible to believe that it's gone on for this long. So I'm really happy about that. Now, one interesting thing is the restrooms downstairs, the main restrooms are gonna switch. So if you know the building, the women's room is on the, basically on the left and the men's room is on the right. Well, that's gonna change because the entrance to the elevator is going to be sort of in that area too. So we're gonna have a smaller men's room and a family room, uh, like a family restroom, and then over where the women's room is now, and then a big bank of gender neutral restrooms, individual stalls uh, along in the lobby area there, and then a, uh, a woman's room with a better ADA setup where the men's room so is now. So more restroom? Much more, quite a few more, like eight or nine um, oh. new, re more restrooms, maybe even more. That's and, important because during yeah. performances, people run down mm -hmm. at intermission, do what they need to do and to be able to get them through and back up. Exactly, and, and we don't want to have such long intermissions and people waiting and also the conditions of those restrooms, you know, flush twice is on the sign. <laughs> so one of the major issues is that we still use plumbing from 1931 when the building was built and we're still using a lot of the electrical from that time too, especially in the front of the house. This renovation is primarily front of the house and other spaces that don't involve the auditorium. It's about a $30 million project all told, but we're breaking it into phases. So the first phase is the lobbies. We hope that 
There's enough money for all of these plans that the upstairs where the offices are will change into another meeting and gathering space, hopefully with an outdoor component up on the roof. We're also putting in some better grading for the aisle to get all the way to the stage because it's very steep. It is steep. Very steep. And then the stage will have its own elevator. There'll be better access all around and, and a, a production area as well. So better ways for people to produce their wonderful shows with kids and all of that. And you know, we're going to put a cover on the area, the loading area, so where they put their tables out when they have musicals for kids and it rains. We don't want their props to get wet. I mean, so many just regular things you would come to expect in a theater. We're going to have. So let's talk about the timeline. How long do you think it's going to take for all of that to happen? Well, um, again, this is the city of Los Angeles's timeline, and um, they've uh, allowed Grand Vision to be very involved in some of these, you know, areas that I've talked to you about. But we really don't have a lot of control. But we do think once they start, it'll be about two years. And nobody should think that that things might not pop up right. because uh, you know it is a building from 1930, 31 is when it was built, and it hasn't really been repaired that much. So whereas there are some improvements on the stage area, new electrical there, who knows what they're going to find. This community is such a great place to live and lots of people have been moving here lately because it has, you know, amazing climate and the, the ocean and the cute town that we have all worked very hard to make better and better. And to me, theater and performing arts music, it brings people together. That's why I mentioned a lot of people when they just move here, they want to get involved, they become volunteers here and they start making friends or they just come to a show and they feel more connected. Also people ask about what's it like to see a show here and so many times it's just a lot of people hugging, a lot of people who haven't seen each other in a long time getting together for a moment and enjoying something together and to me that's what makes a town a really great place to live. And I think it's also the soul of a community. Your arts, if, if you don't have arts and theater and music in a community, you have no soul in that community. And so this is the soul of San Pedro. We have a there there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we have a there here. <laughs> Well, it's so great to talk to you, Lee. I really enjoy it. You know, you, you asked you ask the most wonderful questions. This Thank you. Fun. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Before you watch the next video, please remember to like, subscribe, comment below, or share. Thanks again for watching.